This hot female model has become this way because of childbirth. Her body is fat and her waist is full of fat. She has to take care of the baby every day when she opens her eyes, feeding and changing diapers and putting them to bed. This life made her suffer from severe postpartum depression. Marlo had already given birth to a son and a daughter before her third child was born. Her husband was busy at work and tired after work, but he could lie in bed and play video games and did not care about the household chores. Marlo was doing all the housework with her big belly. Her biggest headache is taking care of her to children. Her son Jonah has bipolar disorder. When Marlo took him to kindergarten, he started yelling and cursing because she didn't park in her usual space. The sister next to him also became agitated. Oh my God! Marlo had to try to calm herself down in the situation. She couldn't irritate her son anymore. When they arrived at the kindergarten, the principal talked to Marlo and said that her son was too special. Jonah's presence in the classroom was a disruption to the other children and that the teachers needed to spend more energy on him. It wasn't fair to the other children either. So the principal wanted Marlo to hire a private teacher. Her life is already a mess. She has to take care of everything. But all she can do is smile and tell the principal she'll think about it and leave. Marlo runs into her old friend in a cafe. She looks at her friend's youthful and beautiful face. In contrast to her miserable appearance, she felt a lot of emotions at that moment. Her water suddenly broke that day. Marlo went to the hospital with her belly in her arms and went through the familiar procedure. She was lying on the hospital bed, waiting for the delivery, while her husband lay on the couch, sleeping. As if he had nothing to do with it, Marlo gave birth to a daughter after another life and death struggle. By now she was exhausted. The arrival of her new baby did not excite her. She rested long enough to go to the bathroom. Her husband was asleep again. She had to move slowly to the bathroom by herself. The nurse was there to keep an eye on her. The nurse said that if Marlo couldn't urinate soon, they have to put the catheter back in. Marlo's emotions were breaking down. She didn't know how much more the nurse would let her urinate. Was she going to pee all over the floor or spray into the sky? But what really made Marlo desperate was getting home. She was taking care of her third child with ease in every move. The baby was comfortable, but she didn't get a good night's sleep. She was disturbed by her older daughter and son during the day. She woke up in the middle of the night to the cries of her youngest daughter. Marlo was in a very poor state of mind and became more and more unable to do her job. But even so, she did not stop for a moment. Her long-standing emotions finally exploded when the principal once again urged her to help her bipolar son transfer to another school. She cursed it all. When the mother of three took off her shirt, her son asked, Mom, what's wrong with your body? Marlo couldn't answer. She was just desperate for a life like this. The day-to-day -day care of her children and housework had broken her spirit. Her husband would just boss her around, but not help her at all. Her brother suggested that she hire the night nanny to take care of her little girl at night, so Marlo could get a good night's sleep. Unable to live like this anymore, Marlo had no choice but to accept the offer. That day she was watching TV when there was a knock on the door. She opened the door and saw a young, enthusiastic girl standing at the door. The girl's name was Tully. She was the night nanny that Marlo had hired. The two of them exchanged pleasantries for a while. Marlo gave Tully a brief introduction to the children, but her eyes were still weary of strangers. She looked at Tully's perfect body. Tully was different from her image of the night nanny, and she questioned him. But Tully's words were kind. The way she looked at the child was gentle. Marlo's guard was finally lowered and left the baby in Tully's care. She went back upstairs to her bedroom to rest. Her husband was in bed playing a game with his headphones on. He had no idea what was going on downstairs. Marlo told him that the night nanny was downstairs. When Drew heard Marlo say that, he asked a few questions with a little concern. He asked if it was safe to leave the kids with the night nanny. Marlo said maybe. Then he didn't care about it at all. Marlo slept until dawn. She hadn't been this relaxed in a long time. She continued to take care of the kids alone during the day. At night, it was Tully's turn to take care of them. Tully is not only a good caregiver and a funny talker. She made Marlo's boring days a little more interesting. The two of them talked about TV shows like Best Friends, talking about gossip. Gradually, Marlo grew to trust Tully. She couldn't have trusted her to take care of the kids. Upstairs, Drew, who is addicted to games, has no idea what's going on downstairs. He just noticed that Marlo was in a better state of mind lately. That night, Marlo woke up with a sore breast and went downstairs to feed the baby. Tully looked at the happy picture of mother and daughter and couldn't help but smile. She asked what Marlo's previous job was. 
Marlo used to be a good white collar worker, but Marlo got married and had children. The degree she had earned in the stable job, she had seemed to have nothing to do with her. Marlo now has to focus on her children. Marlo says that if she has unfulfilled dreams now, she can at least be angry with the world. Instead, she is just pissed off at herself. Marlo's life is now nothing but emptiness and loneliness. And Telly's arrival brings her back to the joy of being a woman. Marlo takes out her makeup and puts on a beautiful face. Taking care of the kids doesn't seem to be her pain anymore. The two of them work together to make everything better. Marlo gradually became more and more cheerful. Her face no longer looked sad. Tully found a bottle of wine in the house. Marlo hadn't had a drink in a long time. They moved to a seat in the yard and shared a drink. This time their conversation was about men. Marlo had always loved her husband. Even though there was no longer any passion between her and her husband, but she was willing to stay with him. She and her husband had made at once since she had her little girl. Tully was shocked and had a bold idea. She even dragged Marlo along for the ride. The night nanny puts on a sexy uniform to show off her body in front of her employer. She asks if she can go upstairs in this outfit. Marlo expressed her shock because Marlo's husband was sleeping upstairs. She was surprised but did not stop her. Instead, Marlo is excited to follow Nanny upstairs. They both went to Marlo's husband's room. Nanny climbed into bed first and Marlo Saturday behind her. Drew wakes up to the sound of movement and opens his eyes and is startled. The next morning Drew was in a good mood. He also picked up the baby as if by a miracle. He wanted his wife to tell him what she meant by what happened last night. Marlo said she didn't need to talk about it. Drew said it's great. Marlo's life was getting back on track. She was finally back to her old self in front of the kids and her husband. Telly was late for work that night. Because her annoying roommate was making her angry, she asked Marlo to go out and relax. Telly said that her father could take care of the kids. Marlo couldn't say no to Telly. She and Telly went to a bar after not having been out for a while. They were shaking their heads on the dance floor. And for a moment, all their troubles were gone. But after the party, Telly asked to quit. Marlo was caught off guard. Her sense of security was gone. She pleaded with Telly to stay and help her with the kids. But Telly seems determined to leave. I was just here to bridge a gap. It's time for me to move on. Marlo's consciousness faded on the way home. She fell asleep from exhaustion. And that's when the accident happened. She jerked the steering wheel and the car went into the river. Marlo saw Tully transform into a mermaid in the water and saved her life by unbuckling her seatbelt. In the end, Tully was gone forever. Doctors said Marlo was having serious mental problems and that Marlo's body was in a state of extreme fatigue. Drew still doesn't believe these words. He said there was a night nanny in the house, so Marlo had time to sleep. However, the truth is that Marlo was suffering from schizophrenia. She never bothered to hire a nanny to take care of her family and save money. Tully was a figment of her imagination. Marlo had always wanted someone to help her. Her husband knew nothing of this. He had never even met the night nanny. Every night that he was asleep, Marlo was alone downstairs. Easy. The mother is like a huge black hole that extends indefinitely and swallows everything. The swimming mermaid is the out of body of her own soul that ultimately saves her from herself. The psychotherapy she gives to the child eventually turns into a hug. The fantasy Tully disappears without a trace. The realistic Marlo finally returns to life. I wonder if she will ever find an effective way to cope with life. A woman is a person first, second they are daughters, a wife, or a mother. Life is always so inexplicably set in a pattern. We love to remember the past, like Marlo walking through her favorite neighborhood to get her favorite drink. She probably does it because her current life is not as good as it could be. We have more rights as we grow up. We can choose our own relationships. We are free to choose our own careers. But we also have more obligations and responsibility for our own future. We make choices with hesitation and uncertainty. The sense of gap between our expectations and our expectations is probably the reason why we are unhappy today. To get rid of the discomfort and sadness to achieve self-redemption, we must believe that the only person who lives with us until the end is ourselves.